Afternoon everybody, welcome back to Monkey World. I'm Charlie and I'm here at one of the Gibbon houses. We're at Kim and Tien's house today. Uh, we, Kat is going to be joining us shortly. She's just letting the guys out for lunch and we're going to be watching them go outside and have their lunch up here in the trees uh, and seeing them in their, using their pulley feeders, which we've set up for you. So hope you're all well. This was a bit of um, an impromptu one. We had kind of planned to see the Gibbons today, but we weren't sure about the wet and wild weather. There's Kim, just heading up now. Um, so we didn't give you much notice, so sorry about that. Stars are enabled. If you're enjoying the video, please do give us a couple of stars. Uh, that does help support us at the moment. I'm gonna spin you right round because the guys have just gone out and we'll say hi to Kat as well. And then we will start answering your questions. Hi, everyone that's already coming in. Good. Hi, Kat. Hi. There we go. <laughs> so I'm just trying to see where they've disappeared to. Ah, there we are. So yeah, there's Kim up there, yeah. I'm just gonna zoom in on Kim a little bit there. And Tien is just on the platform there. So, hang on just slightly so you can see Kat as well. So Kat, can you tell us a little bit how these guys are getting on at the moment? How they're coping? Oh, Kim and Tien are a wonderful couple. They're really happy, so they're, they're doing really well at the moment. They're a little bit bored with the weather. They love being outside and obviously really active in the trees. So a lot of time sitting around in the house at the moment so we're just trying to keep everybody a bit more active lots of enrichment feeds and puzzle feeders and stuff like that to keep them busy so what have they got for lunch today if i zoom in if i come up here and zoom in and kim a little bit so lunch today is actually these tiny little bits of hose tubes um, and we've squeezed some bits of pear into it um, so it just makes life a little bit more challenging for them um, Kim in particular, like all of our girls, has a really, really good appetite um, <laughs> so she is inclined to get more of her fair share than poor Tien because he's a little bit slower so this just kind of slows her down a little bit as well makes the feed last a little bit longer and keep them interested and amused for a bit longer as well Fabulous! Um, and can you just remind everyone how Kim and Tien, Tien came to the park? or? how they were born at the park because it is. Well, both of these guys are actually born here at the park. Um, so Kim is uh, Jake and Zoe's daughter um, and she's now 12. <laughs> <laughs> I have to think about that one. Um, and then we've got Tien down there. He is now 15 this year. Um, he was born here at the park to um, Peanut and Pung Yo. Oh, fabulous. Um, and they're golden cheek gibbons, guys. So you can see that, um, well, you can't see because Tien's not looking at us, but Tien's got the the golden cheeks that give them their name. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about them in the wild? Yeah, so golden cheek gibbons are really noticeable for the difference in the, the way that they look. Most of the gibbons, if you look at them, they're the same sort of colour, etc. These guys obviously are very noticeably different. So the adult male is the black one um, with the golden cheeks that they obviously have the name from. And then the adult females are like Kim, they're blonde all over with a little black cap on the top of their head. Um, the babies are born blonde, so they'll nicely camouflage into mum's belly, so that's male or female babies. Um, and they'll stay like that up until about eight months, a year old, where they'll start having a colour change. And then again, both male and female babies will actually turn to the same colour as their dad, so they'll be black all over with the little golden cheeks. Um, now, the males will obviously stay like that. The females will go through a second colour change. And that usually takes about a year, somewhere between sort of six and eight years old. And once she's through that, she's then a sexually receptive adult female and usually has gone off and found herself a boyfriend by then. <laughs> Fabulous. Right, I see lots of questions coming in. Hi guys, nice to see you all. I'm going to scroll back and see if we can get, exploit Kat while she's here and get all her <laughs> gibbon knowledge from her. Thank you for all the stars coming. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Stephanie. It's really helpful. As always, our Amazon wish lists up as well, and we've got all our things on our donation appeal. It all really helps. And if you are enjoying these videos and they're cheering you up a little bit during lockdown, we'd really appreciate that as well. Hi, Joanne. Woo. Katie wants to know where Jake is. <laughs> <laughs> Jake is now at the main Gibbon house up behind the Orang Nursery with Zoe. Um, we had a bit of a switch around. Um, early in sort of 2020 um, just for different circumstances um, so we had um, Dulumi used to live with Adidas but sadly last Christmas um, Adidas died um, after a very short and sudden illness so Dulumi has moved to the main Gibbon house to be with Nini um, so that's actually a really nice intro that's been kind of ongoing throughout the last year or so um, they are doing really well at the moment 
So because we were obviously switching everybody around, we moved Jake and Zoe up to the main Gibbon house as well. Lovely. Um, I can't see who saw that question, it skipped past it, but someone wants to know, is there any type of weather we wouldn't let them outside in? I did sort of mention we weren't sure about the wet and wild today, were we? When it's really, really windy, we don't let the guys out in the trees. I mean, obviously you can see a bit of movement in the trees today with that bit of a breeze. It's not really bad. Um, but the big concern is when it's really, really gusty. One, we could have an issue with a large branch breaking or something like that and mm. coming down, um, which potentially could injure the gibbons. We also have a bit of an issue of like that being an escape route. For example, if a large mm. branch came down onto the fence line there, and um, potentially the gibbons could use that to run out over the fence. The other potential is when the gibbons are really flying through the trees and they could get that wind under them, that they could potentially jump from tree to tree and actually get out of the enclosure. It's very unlikely because we do have very big gaps um, between the trees on the outside and the inside of the enclosure. But just to be always err on the side of caution with those high, high winds. Yeah, fantastic. So Janice has asked, how are Foxanella, please? Foxanella are doing really well. Um, they're now down at the Stumpy enclosure um, and they're absolutely loving it down there. It's a little bit more of a kind of retirement home from them, away <laughs> from the noise and the chaos of the main Gibbon house and all the other Gibbons down there. Um, they don't seem to be bothered at all by the Stumpies. And Farella, just with her being a bit older and a bit slower now, it's nice to have that smaller space that she can easily move around in. Um, she's doing well with her eyesight. Obviously, we did have the cataract surgery on Ella a few years ago and um, that actually one eye is still very densely got the, the thick cataract on it but the other one's doing really really good so um, she's managing quite well. Fabulous and there, has their behaviour changed at all being away from the main house? Uh, they seem a little bit more relaxed, um, a little bit more playful perhaps. Um, it might be that we just see it a little bit more often because yeah. of the way the house is laid out. Um, they're in our line of sight a little bit more often than they were in the main Gibbon house um, and so you can actually see them playing quite a lot down there and really enjoying that. Fabulous. Uh, Di has asked, oh there they go, Tien's just swinging right through the trees on the other side. Look you at can him see go. him, he's amazing isn't he? So he's now, I'm trying to see if you can actually see him through here. I might just ping out a little bit then you'll definitely be able to see him. Di's asked if we would ever breed from these guys at the moment. Not right now, unfortunately um, in the European population there is quite a lot of golden sheet givens, um, which means that there's not anywhere for them to go. So if we have lots and lots of babies then everybody is stuck with these babies that can't actually move on anywhere else into the sort of zoo community there's obviously only limited amount of spaces for gibbons in all the different zoos um, so right now we're on a bit of a hold on breeding these guys and um, we do have kim on the contraceptive pill so obviously if circumstances change um, we could obviously potentially stop her contra contraceptive and have a baby then um, but right now we don't we don't plan on doing that no Sorry guys, I just lost them there, which shows how well camouflaged they are. <laughs> I was desperately trying to find them while the cat was explaining that to us. That's why I was doing lots of zooming in and out, trying to find the gibbons in the trees. Oh, she's so fun. wonderful. Okay. Uh, Shannon wants to know, do gibbons have a mating ritual and a call? Mm. Um, so in terms of a mating ritual, it's more a case of the, they would actually just meet together in the wild. Often what you'll see them do, if it's completely wild circumstances, um, as they sort of leave their family home and territory, they start traveling through the rainforest and you will hear um, a single gibbon singing their part of the song and mm. then they would leave a gap. Um, and if there is a, uh, say if it's a male singing and there's a female nearby, if she's also single and interested in meeting up, then she will answer in that part of the call. And they'll kind of travel through the rainforest towards each other. Um, and then once they meet up, they'll kind of spend time together. They'll groom each other. Um, obviously there'll be some mating and then you'll see the development of that song and the song is the real crucial thing to show you how well that pair bond is and mm. um, the more that they practice together the timing the synchronicity etc a really really powerful built-in call will come out um, you'll notice when they first start off they're a little bit timid and a little bit shy about singing it their notes are quite quiet um, but as I say, as that builds and they really believe in each other and they feel confident in each other, that will come a really nice, strong song. Again, I'm just looking for them. I can see ropes moving. I just can't. <laughs> there she is. There's Miss Kim. Hi, Tony. Nice to see you there. Thank you for the stars, Christine. Two week streak. Amazing. Here she comes. Here she is. Right on cue. Yeah, Monica, it's lovely to see them in the trees, isn't it? Hi, Jill, thank you for the stars. 
hope you enjoy uh, the video. Hi from Ellen from Glasgow. Cher says they're so comfy in the tree shops, they must be very strong. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing how strong they are. I mean, tend to people look at them and think those long, skinny arms, they look quite fragile. And especially if you look at their hands, they have really, really long, thin fingers and they look like they would just easily break and not have a lot of power in them. Um, but the gibbons are capable of suspending their whole body weight on one set of fingertips. And they just, like I say, absolutely fly through the treetops. Um, the power that they have, if you feel their arms, especially in the upper arms and the biceps, there's lots of solid, solid muscle in there. Yeah. Yeah, even if they look a little bit um, lean, they don't have like the brute of the chimps, do they? But they are incredibly strong still. Uh, Gemma, yeah, these two were born at the park. Yeah. Kim was to Jake and Zoe, and Tien was to Peanut and Pung Yo. Let me just see if I can come out a little bit. Let's see, here, there, there she is. Having a bit of a wobble there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not showing your most graceful side there, Kim. I don't know if you want to come around here so you can... I've got it. There we go. And um, did you want to come over here so they can hear you? Is that right? Thank you. Uh, Karen wants to know what Gibbon's favourite food is. Mm, probably for most of our guys it's the bananas. Um, they really, really do enjoy them. Um, any kind of dried fruit they really enjoy as well. Naturally in the wild they would eat a lot of fruit. Um, and a lot of leaves. Then the different species, some of them, like the golden cheeks, don't really eat an awful lot of protein like insects or birds eggs and things like that. Um, something like the lars and the moolers, they would eat a lot more of those. Um, up to about 10% of their diet is actually insects in the wild. Um, the siamangs, they're actually a lot more leaf. They will eat more than 60% of their diet will be the leaf. Wow, so they really do much. enjoy that. Um, and you see that reflected in the way that our guys actually eat here at the park. Um, you know, some of our guys will just turn their nose up at the lettuce, but the siamangs absolutely love it and <laughs> they will wolf that down really, really quickly. Um, they also love the occasional treats that we give them of like the carbohydrates as well. So um, any of those things like um, pastas and rices and stuff like that are really nice. But obviously we do have to really limit how much of that they get because we don't want them getting fat. Hi to Oliver, hope you're enjoying the thing. Uh, and Sophie B wants to know, do they ever fall from the trees? Occasionally you'll see them having a little bit of a slip where they maybe misjudge it, but because they're so quick and redirecting, you'll very often see that if they have had that little slip, they just rehook onto a new mm. branch, um, or they kick off with their foot against a branch or something like that, and very quickly they manage to um, right themselves. So it's very rare for them to actually fall all the way. Um, it's not unheard of, and you will obviously see even with wild gibbons that maybe from a really bad fall, you have a broken arm or something like that. Um, but these guys are so amazing, even with a serious injury on one arm, the young and fit ones will just carry on flying through the treetops one-handed. So That's it's awesome. incredible to watch when they are like that. I was going to say, is it more of a problem in the wild when the, the dry season, you've got the brittle branches and things? Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously with any of the... Sorry, noisy view. <laughs> I mean, obviously in the trees you're always going to have that as a risk that a branch will break I mean these guys are obviously right out onto some of the tiny tiny little twigs on the end of the trees um, and there's always that possibility that it's going to break these guys are very lightweight though you, Kim is just about um, six and a half sorry seven and a half kilos and Tien's only just over seven kilos so they're very lightweight for the physical size of them and um, they have a light bone density so that really helps them to um, you know maintain themselves up in those treetops yeah, fantastic. You can just see them there. If you see the size of some of the branches that they're actually sitting on at the moment, you wouldn't think they would hold that size of animal, but... And is this quite usual for them just to sort of settle down once they've had a bit of food and they settle in the branches there? Ooh. Yeah, it's, it's quite common close. that they will actually come down a little bit lower and sit in these branches down here. Um, they're close to the house in case we decide to come and give them a feed or something. They can see what's going on. Um, it's not. This is one of their favourite trees, this big one here. Um, they'll often be sat in the back of high branches or down in the small branches like that together. Um, usually, once they've had their food, they're not usually that far apart. So if one's up high, the other one's not normally very far away um, and if one goes into the house the other one will usually follow as well. And Stephen wants to know how many gibbons do we have here at the park? 
Uh, we currently have 19. 19. Um, and how many golden cheeks is it? Am I making you count now? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, was gonna say, <laughs> I need fingers and thumbs for that, I think. Uh, we have 11. 11. Oh, there you go. She did not know it. She Hello? Pretending she didn't. Uh, James wants to know, how many species of apes and monkeys do we have here? I think it's at 24 different species at the moment. Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. It changes. <laughs> yeah, it does as we get new ones. Are we actually trying to breed our golden chickens? We sort of went over that a minute ago, Andrew. Um, not at the moment is the, is the quick answer. Karen wants to know who is the oldest monkey at the park? Hmm. The oldest gibbon is probably Ella. Um, she's sort of probably well into her 40s, but a lot of the time we're kind of guessing based on when they come in, um, how they look. Um, I think one of the oldest is the chimps, is it? Bixer, I know he's one of the oldest chimps. Yeah, she's, she's in her forties. She's in her forties as well. Mm. Um, a lot of our guys, we just don't actually know how yeah. old they are. Um, when they come in as an adult, I don't know if you can see Tien just flying through the lower trees down there. He's having a bit of a tear you around. Just see him there, yeah, um, little black dot. Yeah, sometimes we're really guessing um, when the ages, when they're actually full adults, when they come mm. in, it can be easily, like say a gibbon, they could be six, seven years old or they could be 25. There's, there's not a lot of difference in how you would actually know that. Yeah. So a lot of the time we're looking at things like the state of their teeth, their physical health, how they move and things like that. But again, depending on their background, depending on how well they were treated or how badly they were treated, obviously these things can be impacted by that so a lot of the time we are kind of just guessing in, in, in those age ranges and how long do they roughly live for um in the wild um 25 to 30 for a gibbon mm -hmm. would be really really old um in captivity there are a few around the world that are kind of touching 60 so wow. um, there is a real marked difference in a, a a captive animal that's given a really well balanced diet and a nice safe life um, with a heated house and all those kind of things <laughs> and the comforts that we can provide and obviously healthcare as well you know like I was saying earlier an injury in the wild can mean the difference between life and death if you can't if you can't keep up with the family you can't find food etc um, you just can't move around enough then the malnourishment and all that will happen and you're more inclined to be taken by a predator obviously here if they're not very well or they're injured we will give them all the medication and all the care um, so that obviously makes a big difference in the long term. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the golden cheek gibbons, someone's asked if they're in the sort of, all sort of same group. So, no, they live in two in pairs and family groups, don't they? Yeah, so all the gibbons, um, they don't live in groups in the wild. They would live with one male and one female and then their direct offspring. Um, usually as their offspring become uh, sexually mature, they will be pushed out of the family territory by the same sex parent. Um, so we reflect that here in the park as well. And we have all of our boys um, just in pairs, or we have a couple of single gibbons at the moment as well. Thank you. We've lost them again. Um, Kim's down there. She's still in oh, the yeah, she's still in her tree. Thank you. This is why I need cat doing these things. <laughs> spotting gibbons. The in spotting the trees. gibbons, yeah. It's helpful when they do that, though, when they move. But, yeah, because see them when they move. Kim sat so beautifully still. Okay. Jessica wants to know are they endangered? Yes, they are. All the gibbon species are endangered, um, some critically so. Um, in fact, the Hainan gibbon is the most endangered primate. Um, recently, there was a couple of extra ones actually found, so I think their current number is up to 21. Is that, that is it? 21, 21 single individuals that are left Oof. in the Hainan gibbons. And unfortunately, all of the threats faced by the gibbons are on the increase. So we've got a lot of deforestation from their natural homes. That's being replaced by sort of rubber, palm plantations, etc. So obviously that totally displaces the gibbons, it makes them end up in tiny little pockets of rainforest living on top of each other. A lot more competition, not just with their own species, but with other animals for the limited food resources. Um, sadly, we also see an increase in the pet trade and the photography trade as mm. well. Um, now obviously they do look beautiful, they look soft and fluffy and gentle, um, but these guys are, are none of those things. Um, they are incredibly territorial animals, they're incredibly um, volatile in nature um, and unfortunately when they do attack they have canine teeth that are over an inch long and razor sharp on the end so you quite often see that they end up with those canine teeth either sort of smashed or pulled out of their mm. mouths. Um, another thing we frequently see from that kind of industry is broken fingers 
as I was saying earlier, they have got very long skinny fingers. So in actual fact, when they grab, they've got this really, really strong, powerful grip. And you will see obviously from people trying to pull their fingers off or whatever, or smacking their hands, that those fingers have been broken. So um, we have got quite a few of our guys from those kind of trades that have got um, fingers or toes that are really malformed where they've been broken and not treated properly so they can't actually use them. Wow. And Claudia's just asked if they were, are they dangerous? And I think your answer about the canines shows that yes, they are incredibly yeah, they are. dangerous. And they're, they're incredibly fast. Um, whenever we're teaching any of our given staff, the biggest thing that we have to be aware of is our, our spatial awareness. Mm. Um, these guys, let's say they're very volatile in nature. They absolutely love to rip your hair out. Um, <laughs> they, if you don't look at them and you turn your back or they like to grab you and, and sort of like hold on to you at the backs of your hands and stuff like that. Um, so you really have to pay attention to where they are and what they're doing at all times because they can be really unpredictable. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that cat, this is amazing. <laughs> um, Hopefully not waffling too much. No, it's all great. <laughs> Normally I gabble away and, uh, and uh, these guys don't actually get any really specific information so it's really good. We're really lucky to have a cat today. Victoria said, I know Peanut has her basket that she loves to sit in. Do any of the other Gibbons have a favourite place to sit or, or object to stay in? Um, so the Gibbons don't really do comfort. Um, <laughs> they're a little bit special when it comes to bedtime. If you look at the Gibbons bumps, you'll see they've got like these two kind of calloused pads. Um, and those are kind of the base that a Gibbon would sit in. So if they were sleeping in the tree, they would sit on these pads on a nice thick branch, tuck their feet up by their bum, and then they would usually wrap one arm around their legs. The other one would go in a branch above them and they will fall asleep sitting up like that. Um, that is kind of how they all sleep here as well. So even though we provide them nice sleeping baskets, sometimes we put a fluffy blanket in <laughs> so it's nice and cozy. Invariably, those blankets will be ripped out and thrown on the floor. Um, some of them will sleep in a basket, like um, Zoe, she loves to sleep in her basket. Um, but most of them will sleep in some of the most uncomfortable looking positions, <laughs> um, often perched on the top of a telegraph pole, for example, and they will literally fall asleep sitting upright on there. Um, sometimes they just sleep on the mesh where they're actually on, you know, two inches of bar on the mesh and they're just propped up against it. So, um, yeah, comfort doesn't really seem to be the thing that they, <laughs> that they go for. These guys crave. That's very sweet. Let's that together. Thank you very much for everyone who's um, sending in stars. I am seeing them come in. Sorry, I'm just not wanting to interrupt Kat. So thank you so much for everyone coming in. Uh, Karen, wants <laughs> Karen wants to know, do gibbons climatise to our weather? Yeah, I mean, like most mammals, they, they can cope with the weather in, in various different countries. Obviously, they're all like us as well, different characters. Um, so some of them will take one look at the rain and just go, nope, I ain't going out there. <laughs> um, some don't care, they will go out and not bother about it. Alex, for example, she couldn't care less. She will sit out in the rain for hours. She just loves to be outdoors. Um, the wind is a big thing for some of them. Um, you get some really wild behavior in the wind, especially someone like Fox, he absolutely loves it. He'd be up as high as he can get with the wind absolutely battering into him. He really enjoys that. Um, the summer heat, you will often mm. see that really affects them and they'll be quite lazy and just sort of lazing around, especially in the middle of the day uh, when it's just that little bit too hot. But generally they cope quite well. They've all got nice heated houses so they can come out, have a run around, get some breakfast, go back inside, get warmed and dried up again. So um, it doesn't really bother them too much. Fantastic. Chris, uh, hi to Mason. Um, Chris wants to know, they look as if they're groomed, so lovely. Do they get vitamins? Uh, yeah, so we give all of our primates at the park get things like cod liver oil, evening primrose oil and vitamin C on a daily basis. Um, for the gibbons, these guys, because they're young and fit and healthy, they don't get an awful lot of um, other supplements. Um, but some of our other guys, like our old ladies, like Ella and Alex, for example, they get things like glucosamine and turmeric to actually really help with their old joints and bones. Um, we give them a milk thistle, um, which just seems to help with their, their liver function. We've had a few issues in the past with some of our guys um, with their liver. So we've, we've been trying to help that out with the milk thistle. Um, and then just anything else that we think that they might actually benefit from. Um, and that does vary according to an individual's needs at the time. 
and that's why we use our Amazon wish list. Just to do a little plug of that, I feel like I have to when we mention all those things. <laughs> so that's when we put our extra supplements on that we needed. So a little while ago, we did, had to do a big push on milk thistle because we were running a bit low, but I think we're all all right for it now. But other things are always on there, like our weekly insect allowance is on there as well. So those sort of things are really, really useful um, if you're able to help. Hazel asked if these guys, um, the gibbons sing at different species, sing at different times of the day. So generally wild gibbons would sing first thing at dawn um, for most of the species other than the siamangs. They tend to let everybody else get up in the morning and they usually sing a little bit late around about sort of 10 o'clock for the wild guys. Um, for these guys, obviously they have a little bit more sort of territorial threats and by that I mean things like us coming into their house mm or um, members of the public being quite close around them and things. Um, so they do tend to sing a little bit more frequently throughout the day. Um, you tend to see a lot of singing very early in the morning. Everybody comes out and does their, their morning chorus and it's a beautiful sound across the park. Um, the main Gibbon House, they all tend to sing quite a bit in the afternoon as well. Um, and we do tend to hear that quite consistently, sort of two o'clock onwards for about an hour or so where they all like to have their say on the day. <laughs> but afternoon tea and an afternoon meeting. Yep. Put the world to rights. Oh, look at him go. He's so wonderful. Janice says, what time is bedtime and are they allowed to stay out or are they bought in? Um, so at this time of year, bedtime's actually quite early. Um, again, reflecting the sort of wild behaviour. Um, as you see, the way that these guys move, the hand-to-eye coordination up in the treetops is really, really crucial. So as that sun starts to kind of get a little bit lower in the sky, it's going to get quite gloomy up in those treetops. So most of the gibbons would go to bed about an hour before dusk. And um, for the siamangs, they actually go to bed about two hours before dusk, just because they are that bit heavier and slower, um, and they like to get into bed a bit sharper. Um, so at this time of year, we're, um, the siamangs were put into bed at the moment about half past three. Um, and for the rest of our guys, it's around about four o'clock. Um, in the winter time, obviously we'll do that right through the darker sort of months. And then come spring, we try and keep them up a little bit later. And into the summer, obviously we'll keep them up even later than that, um, sort of nearer six o'clock if possible. Um, the guys in the cages, in the summer months they will get the, uh, so the cages with the roofs on so they will get to go out into their enclosures overnight again as well and have that um, early morning breakfast and things out, outside however these guys we don't leave them out overnight and the same with peanut and tongue and the siamangs just because they're up in those trees and i was saying earlier on there's always that risk of some damage to the trees overnight um, mm. and you know you don't want to come in in the morning and find that a branch has come down on the fence line and the guys have actually managed to get out of their enclosure so. yeah or hurt themselves yeah. yeah um happy birthday to oscar happy He's birthday oscar. nine on the fifth great age well done oscar and let's come through hopefully you can just see kim and tian swinging up there keeping fairly zoomed out so you can see that here he comes And if you look at the branch he's standing on right now, it's just incredible. <laughs> Let's see if I can zoom in on that. Oh, no, he's moved. This is the problem with gibbons. If you ever, yeah, if you him. ever get an amazing oh, photo or video, <laughs> there she goes. So they're headed into the house. We can walk down and see them. Should we go there. round and see them in the house? Oh, so we have got some um, building work and extensions and stuff going on to houses as well which is if you've got a little glance of that there, a little sneak peek of what might be happening around here, um, which hopefully you'll see when we come back in. Turn you round. Here they are. Just check my signal, hopefully, yep, yeah, I'm still on the Wi-Fi, so that's good. <laughs> I know. So here they are in the house, lovely. <laughs> so I said, yeah, they've decided to spend a bit of time outside, have their lunch, and that was enough, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, so they've come back inside, and as we were saying earlier, we're having the option all day long they have the option to come in, they've got a nice hot radiator there so they can have a nice heat up if they've got really cold. Kim absolutely loves to lie um, flat on top of that radiator and get her belly warmed up. And then once they've warmed up they'll usually end up having a nice cuddle whilst they're waiting now for their next meal to come down. Great. Any more questions on these guys? I think we've gone through them all if I've missed them. Oh, sorry Tian.
Can you all see and hear me still? Now we've moved. Joe says we need to get closer. This is probably as close as we can properly get. I think they are. Doing quite well. We'll just get a bit of reflection out the way. Glad you're enjoying it. Chris, thank you. Jill, yeah, they're gorgeous, aren't they? Yeah, Karen, you say they're cute, don't be fooled. <laughs> Tien's checking out what's going on in the woolly monkeys across the road. Katie wants to know, do they have any favourite food? Did we cover this earlier? So yeah, as we were saying earlier, is that most of them will really love a banana and the individual favourites are um, quite special. Most of them will like any kind of dried fruit and any of the normal fruits as well. Um, but yeah, definitely with the siamangs, that's increased to the, the leafy foods. They really enjoy any of the leaf. Um, these guys really enjoy pretty much everything. They, they have a really, really healthy appetite. Um, even if we give them things like celery and broccoli, they're actually really, really happy. Um, they're not fussy eaters, these two. <laughs> Good eaters. Uh, Claudia says, why are they black? So um, Kat sort of spoke about the different colors of these guys. The boys, when they're um, mature, are black and the females stay blonde. And this is where the boys get the give the species their name because they have these golden cheeks. Glad you're enjoying it, Danielle. Thank you, and Sophie B. Tien's just showing off his canines there. Oh yeah, bit. let's have a look. As he threatens us. <laughs> not gonna do it now. No, no, he's gonna keep his mouth shut now. Oh, saw a little glance of them there. He has very big Glance upper canines. It's amazing that they actually fit in his mouth. <laughs> you know, when he does a yawn, you think, where do you put those teeth when your mouth's closed? <laughs> I can come around this way, I get a little bit less reflection. That's better. Is that better? Mm. And so what's the plan with these guys for the rest of the day? Um, so they've had most of their feeds for the day. They're just waiting for their final feed, which will be at bedtime. Um, so they'll get bedtime feed is quite a nice feed. Um, they'll get one food item, but then they'll also get some, uh, it's either a carbohydrate or a protein. So today is Tuesday. So we'll have eggs tonight. Ooh. Um, so they really enjoy their eggs and they'll also Cooked get, eggs. um, yeah, they're always cooked. Um, usually we just boil them. Mm -hmm. Um, but sometimes they might have scrambled eggs. So that's quite <laughs> exciting. Um, and sometimes we'll use that as their enrichment as well. So we'll put it in some of those like tubes or bowls or something just to make them have to work a little bit more for it. Um, and they get their banana allowance as well. So um, everybody gets a different allowance depending on their size and their appetite. So Tien is slightly lighter and smaller than, than Kim um, because she is the one with the hefty appetite. So she only gets half a banana and he actually gets a whole one, um, which he really, really loves. Fabulous. Okay. I think I'll start wrapping up then. I can't see any more questions coming through. So thank you very, very much, Kat. We'll leave you to get on. I'm sure we've got uh, all the other guys to look after for today. Yeah, Keep you nice and busy. Yeah. And all oh, the noisy workmen about to come back as well. So I will start to finish us off there. So thank you very much, guys. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> We're slowly driving past us, having a panic. Thank you very much for joining us today in this live. If you have enjoyed it and you are able to send us a couple of stars, it's quite an easy way for you to support us. Just a couple of pence, but it makes all the difference to us here at the park. Um, and we will see you probably on Friday. We've got another homeschooling or education live. So we'll put, advertise that on our Facebook again, so keep an eye on that. And we'll see you all soon. Thank you, bye. <laughs>